Hi guys and welcome to the next video in the 2021 exam series. In this activity we're going to look at the forms and how to create the forms in our exam. First we're going to create a new form using the form wizard. So select this, simply do this, click on create and then choose the form wizard. From here we're going to choose the table which we want to create a form for and that's going to be for the table art. We're going to then choose the double arrows to select all of the fields in that table and then select next. We're going to leave the default column the layout and then we're going to go up to where the form name is and we're going to change that to FRM. Remember we must always make sure we use the right prefix when we're doing our naming and we're going to modify the form's design, leave that selected and click finish. Here you can see we've now got our form with uh, FRM art. What we want to do is give a proper name for our form. So all I'm going to do is just delete the FRM and then add a piece of art text to it. Now here we can do a bit more formatting. We're going to make it a little more wider. We can now choose the property sheet in the ribbon. Here we're going to get a few more options that we can customize. We're going to make sure that our text is aligned to the center. And we can also do some other bits and pieces like changing the font size. So we're going to change that to 26. If you wanted to, you can make it bold, underlined. And you could even change the font color if you wanted to, or even change the font altogether using the properties tab. Now we're going to move down into the main part of our form and we're going to choose to select the labels and we want to put some spaces inside of these labels so that they're customized a little bit more. So it says art ID, art name rather than one word. And we're going to run what we've created. Here you can see that it looks pretty standard and we want to add some more information as we've been asked by the exam paper. What we need to do is we're going to go to our home and create, we're going to click on home and go to the design view and we're going to just drag down our main area a little bit where we've got our detail. We're just going to add a little bit more formatting to our artist ID. What we want to do is create some form of validation rule. So we're going to click on the actual text box itself. We're going to go inside the art and artist name area and we're going to choose the data tab in our property sheet. Here we're going to create a validation rule and this is going to require that a value is placed into it. So we want to put the validation rule to be is not null. And then just to prompt our users to make sure that they understand they must enter some information, we're going to put a message in a validation text area that asks them to please enter the name of the artist. We're going to change the size of this text input just to make it a little bit more consistent with the others and also we're going to now add another control and um, we're going to put a little label in and we're just going to put a little asterisk and required label on here just as a visual prompt to our users to remind them that this is actually a required field. Once we've done that if we select the text inside and go to the properties sheet we can add some formatting to it. We're going to choose the four color to be red and we could make it bold if we wanted to, uh, but that is entirely up to you. We're going to do the same here with the selling price as we did with the artist name. We're going to go into the tab for the selling price, go to the validation rule, and we're going to put in here, it must be between 100 and 1500. Again, as we did with the artist name, we're going to put a little validation text message in here to say, please enter a value between 100 and 1500.
Now, as we did with the artist name, we're going to add another label and they're going to add the label against the selling price. And again, we're just going to do an asterisk brackets required. And as we did before, we're going to go into the properties tab and provide some styling to the actual text to make it consistent with what we did with the other label. So I'm just going to go down to four color, choose the drop down option and select that it is red. We're just going to do a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to click on the status option and we're going to delete that. And now we're going to go and create our first of our two buttons we're going to create for our form. In order to create a button, we're going to use the control section. And as soon as we drag out our button, it's going to open up the command button wizard uh, where we can, we've got a few options here we can choose from. But what we're going to do in this instance is we're actually going to cancel. Doing so, it keeps our proportions for our buttons as we selected them. We're just going to go inside the button itself and we're going to rename the button. And this is going to be save record. And we're going to click off and click back on. And this time we're going to right click and use the build event. Here we can choose the macro builder option and we click OK and this takes us into our macro builder. Inside our macro builder we're going to create a new if statement. Notice when we create a if statement we get a few options that we can choose from. If we go to the very end you'll notice there's a, a wand tool with some dots underneath it. That allows us to create a expression. So we're going to choose the element that we want to select which is the artist name and then we're going to go inside here and we're going to put is null so what we're saying here is if the artist name field has no value in it we want an action to be displayed well our action is going to be a message box so we're going to select on the message box option and we're going to put a message that's appropriate for the user so that they understand that they need to enter a value inside of that area as you can see here, I'm just typing, you must have a value in the artist name area. Underneath this, we've got an option to choose for a bleep. And then we've got the type of message we want to display, whether it's a critical warning, or an immediate warning or an information element. And then we're going to create a title. And this is the title that goes on the top of our message box to user. Once I'm satisfied with that, I can then add an additional if statement, which allows me to cycle through the options we have. So if the artist name is null, then it's gonna move on to the next thing. And we want to check that the selling price has a value in there as well. So we're going to select the selling price option in the macro in the expression builder and is null. Then we're going to display a message box to prompt the user that they must have a value inside of the selling price area. As with the previous one, we're going to have a little bleep option and we're going to have a warning type again inside of our type of message box we want to display to the user. And again, we're going to put a title of error. Once we're satisfied with that, we're going to add an else statement. So if the two values that we've mentioned about above have content in them, we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be a run menu command. And we're going to choose the menu command of save. Notice we have a few options inside of our command option area. We're just going to scroll down to where it says save record. Once you've selected that, we're going to add another option, another message box, just to prompt the user to let them know that the record has actually been saved. And we're going to put a message in here to say that your record has been saved successfully. We're going to change the type of message box that we're going to use and this is going to be an information box and we're going to put a title of complete. Once we've done that we're going to add one more last command which is to requery. Once we put that in there that should be appropriate and we're going to click on save and then we're going to close so we're just going to trial this out. We're going to go to our view option and we're just going to press the save record button with no values inside of the artist name and seller price. And we can see here that we've got our first error message. So let's put a value in here. 
and then we're going to put we can see that once we put a value inside of the artist name and then put an art, a value in there and we're going to choose one of our artist IDs and we can see that the artist ID has been saved successfully. We're now going to move back to the form itself. We're going to look at the artist ID. The artist ID, when we open it for the first time, is only going to show a value of an ID number. This is going to be completely useless to someone that doesn't know what that ID number represents. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be editing and changing the artist ID so that it actually represents a value that is meaningful to the user. So in order for us to do that, we're going to go back into the form view. Once we're in the form view, we're going to choose from the controls option, a combo box, and we're going to drag it out to where we want it on our form itself. Notice we get a few options in our query wizard and we're going to choose the first option where we're going to use a table that's already been created for us. We're going to choose the table artist and we're going to select next. We're going to choose the artist surname and we're only going to add that one over. It's just that single field. Once we click on next and move through the menus, you notice that we get a preview of what the values are inside of that actual area. But note that we can see that we have a hidden key. I didn't add that. If you go back you can see that the artist ID has been added automatically. If I remove it and then go back to that section again, you'll see if I uncheck the hide key option, it should still show us the key. We need that key, so we're going to leave it there, but we're going to hide it. On the next menu, we're going to choose where we're going to store the value of that key. We want to store the value of the ID number into the artist ID area inside of our table art table. We only want the artist's ID, we don't need their name. We're going to change the label for our combo box to CBO, which stands for combo, and then we're going to give it a name such as artist ID. We're going to select finish and then we're going to just run our form. Just going to move this over here a little bit so it's a little bit out of the way. We're going to run our form and see what it looks like. Notice now we see the name of the artist. We can see all of the artists available. And so I choose a different artist. Notice the number in the original artist ID drop down box that we had changes to represent the value of the artist. If I change it over in the artist ID area, you'll see that it automatically updates the artist's name. So what we're going to do is we're just going to delete the original one because we don't need that any longer and we're going to drag our new one over and we're going to change the label on there, make sure it represents artist and then we're going to view and we're going to see that actually it looks quite nice and we're just going to go for a run through a new artist and we're going to run through the next bit to see if there's new artwork and we're going to just play around putting a value inside of the required areas and inside of the artist we're going to just put in their value click on save and there you go we can see that our record has been saved successfully